everybody it's kelly with inky hands warm hearts i was in the middle of filming and for some reason i got cut off so we're gonna start all over <laughs> i'm gonna show you what we're making this adorable little custom three by three um box to hold three by three cards it was wrapped all pretty and i'll show you at the end how we'll wrap it up but um we're using the taylor made tag dies which are these and that's how we're gonna do the tag on the front we are also using the um, Tasteful Labels dies, which you'll see when I open the box. This little one right here, we're gonna use that for all of our cards. So definitely check out the Tasteful Label dies. And of course, you know how much I use layering circles. Um, it's a given that you have to have those. Um, the paper on the front of the box is a black and white paper that is part of part Pattern Party and you can get it for free. If you do a party at my online store or spend $150 or more, you can pick this for free with your freebies. And so definitely um, pick some freebies when you do that. And I've colored those in with Pale Papaya, Fresh Freesia, Polish Pink, Soft Succulent, and Evening Evergreen Stampin' Write markers. Now those markers are available in two packs. You get a dark and a light, and they are alcohol-based markers. They color in beautifully and quickly, and I do love to use those. That's what I have colored our flowers in with all over our box. You see even the bottom has them on there, and I'm gonna show you how to make this box. Um, also, we are gonna be making these mini cards. So it is a rather large little project, but I do 3D projects on Thursdays, and this is my 3D project this Thursday. So you're basically getting a mini class. And I'm gonna show you how to go about that. Um, I'm focusing on the Friends of the Forest this week. So this is my Thursday video, and it has Friends of the Forest stamp set as well. Um, and I've paired the One Happy Family stamp set with it for all the sentiments on our um, cards. So check out all of those items in my online store. Let's go ahead and get started. Unfortunately, I was in the process of cutting and putting our box together when my video decided to cut out. So pretend this is a solid piece of eight inches by four and a quarter inches. And because it is eight by four and a quarter, you can get two of these out of one piece. So we're going to score at the ha on the long side of the eight inch side at half an inch, at three and three quarters of an inch, at four and a quarter of an inch, and at seven and a half inches. And then we're going to turn it the short way, which is four and a quarter inches. And you're going to score at half an inch and at three and three quarters of an inch. And that's how I got all these score marks onto my paper. I then started cutting. So I used my thick bladed scissor here and I started at this piece so that we could make the flap of our box. And I cut on either side of the score mark on an angle and that cut away this piece. And I did the same thing on either side of the score mark because the score mark would have been straight, right? So on either side of the score mark, I cut away. And that formed the top and the sides of my boxes, of my top box here like this. Then I cut straight in on my next set of score marks on the long side and straight in on my last set of score marks. And then the only place I angle cut was here and here so that there's not as much paper when we're doing the um, sides of our box. You'll see in a minute. So let's go ahead and start burnishing, which is what I was doing when my video decided to cut out. So we're just basically turning all of the papers on their score marks and running my bone folder along the score marks just to help when it's time to glue that the paper is more pliable. So we're just going through here and we're burnishing all of these pieces that form our box. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I would be happy to answer them. So there is my box base. I'm also gonna score in this middle section here because that's gonna form the back of the box like so. All right, so now that I have all my box ready, I'm gonna go ahead and attach 
all of my pieces, all of my floral pieces onto it. And I have already gone ahead and cut out and colored the floral pieces. So this is the top of my box, so it's gonna go here. And then the bottom gets on all the sides and the back also gets one. These flaps are gonna be tucked in on the front inside the box. So since they get tucked in side, you're not gonna see them. See the bottom of the box is what has all of those pieces. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna grab my silicone mat here. I'm gonna get my wet glue. We'll start with this large piece first. And you can see the other side is rainbow colored, but the one side is black and white. And I'm just gonna run, making sure that I'm getting on all the edges there. And we'll turn this over. And this is going to get attached onto the front top of the box. So we'll go ahead and attach that. Now I'm gonna turn this around and bring the bottom closest to me. And we're gonna start with these small strips and we're gonna put our wet adhesive on them. And then I'm gonna hold them by the side as to not get adhesive on my fingers. And those will get glued onto these long sections right there. So there's one. And I really like to use wet glue because it gives you a little bit of wiggle room. You can move it around a little bit when you set it down. So that's nice, of course, when you're trying to get your piece into place, right? That you have that room to slide it around a little and make sure that you have it where you want it. So there's that. And if you get a little bit of um, adhesive on there, you can use an adhesive remover. So let's go ahead and do our last two pieces. And then we will glue our box together. So here is the third one. And it's going to go here. On the side. And the last piece. All right, put it in place. And then we will assemble our box. I'll show you how to do that. It's going to be fairly simple. You only have to glue it in a few spots. So we're going to glue these flaps here. We're going to start with the front. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these flaps. I'm going to put adhesive on the little white squares there. We'll start with this one. We'll stand it up. Put it on the, on the table here and stand it straight so it's nice and straight. Of course, like I said, you have that little bit of wiggle room, so definitely use it and get it into place. We're going to do the same thing here. Stand it straight up. Give it its little bit of wiggle room. And if you have a little bit sticking up, you can come in with your scissor and trim that away. Sometimes, you know, when we cut, we don't cut exactly perfect. And so we will have a little bit of extra cardstock in the way there. So I just snip that away. And then we're gonna glue the back square pieces. So these also get the adhesive right here. So we're gonna do this one here and this one right here. And we're gonna put that one into place, same way. Hold that in place while it forms its little square back. And then I'll slide the last one into place here and do the same thing. Form its little backing. I like to put it down so it's nice and flat. 
and then there is the base of our box. So now we have to fill this box, don't we? So let's go ahead and start with our cards. I'm gonna move this just out of camera temporarily. And all of our cards are made with the in colors. You can purchase all of these products in my online store. So we have a Evening Evergreen, a Fresh Freesia, a Soft Succulent, so we have Pale Papaya, Polish Pink, Evening Evergreen, Fresh Freesia, and Soft Succulent papers. And we're gonna go ahead, they've been scored down the middle, so I'm just gonna go ahead and burnish those. Make sure that they are scored nicely. And we'll meet the ends here. Give it a nice burnish for each one here. And just make sure that they meet. I just make the corners, I hold onto the corners and then press. That way if my score line is just slightly off, it does um, meet perfectly in the corners. And one more to go. So here is my last one. Same thing. All right. And they are gonna get their coordinating color of designer series paper. You can also buy this in a six by six paper pack. So we're gonna go ahead and glue the matching colors onto their cardstocks. I'm gonna use my seal adhesive for this. So we'll run the seal adhesive on the edges. And then this, these pieces um, are a little bit smaller. The cards are three by six inches. And these little pieces of designer series paper are a little bit smaller than the card size. So that they fit and have a border all the way around. I use two and three quarter inch squares for these. And so this is the pale papaya on the pale papaya. And we'll move on to the next one, which is the Evening Evergreen. Put it on top. Just like that. And then we'll do Soft Succulent. You can see all of our designer series papers are double-sided. So let's go ahead and Put that one down, and then the final one is the Fresh Freesia. Now all of these are gonna come together really easily and quickly, you will see. But the nice thing is since it takes a half a sheet of cardstock to make the box, you can make two of these gift items at the same time. So there's our five colors for our five cards and they have been attached together. We're gonna start with one at a time. So I have my five circles already die cut and they are waiting here. So we will stamp them one at a time. We'll start with the bunny and the bunny is going to be sitting on his little wood stump. I'm gonna grab my ink here. I'm gonna ink up my bunny. I'm gonna ink up my stump. And we will put the stump here and then we will sit the bunny and since these stamps are clear you can see right through them and sit that bunny right on the stump and then it has a little border of flowers right here next to them just like that so that's that one that's going to go on this purple one we're gonna do all the stamping first and get it out of the way. The next is our deer. So that one's on the soft succulent. We're gonna grab our deer stamp here and we will fit our deer. I'm gonna ink up, the deer's a bigger stamp, so I bring the ink pad to it. And I have a mask on the other side, but I can still see through and make sure my deer fits on my circle here. So there is our deer, and that's gonna go on the soft succulent. Get him out of the way. 
let's go on to our next card, which is our tree. I'm gonna have to bring in a scrap paper because the tree is rather large and will not fit on the circle. So part of it will be stamped off, but I'm gonna do the same thing. It's a larger stamp. So I'm gonna bring my ink pad to the tree and let's position the trunk first. You can see I have a mask on there as well. I'm gonna position my tree so that my trunk is on the circle base. And there is my tree. And this one's gonna go on the evening evergreen card. All right, next is our bunny again for the polished pink. Oh, yeah, I do have two, okay. So we're just gonna set the bunny, just not on the stump this time, just by itself, just right there in the center of our circle. That one's gonna go on the polished pink. And then the last card is the little fox raccoon. I'm not exactly sure what he is, but he is adorable. And I will ink him up. We'll put him on his circle. And this one's gonna go on the polished pink. So that's all the stamping. I've already done the words for us, so we don't have to worry about that. We're gonna do some coloring next. And let me clean all these stamps and get them out of the way. The only stamp I have yet to use is the words for the tag. So I will go ahead and show you how I did that. And then all of our stamping will be finished. All right. So let's move these stamps out of the way here. And the last stamping will be on the tag. So I have our tag already cut and I just want to use the words, my friend from this stamp. So I'm gonna be using the brush end of my Stampin' Write marker that's a black marker. And I'm just going to do the word my and then the word friend. And I'm going to be eliminating the other parts of this stamp, making sure not to ink those. And then I will line up the words, my friend, on my tag right here. And there it goes. That's how you just get that. We'll clean that off. And that is it for stamping today. We'll start coloring and assembling our cards and then we will have our project finished. All right, so on this tag, we're going to glue a little reinforcer. And because we are gluing it directly to, um, we are attaching it directly to the ribbon, this reinforcer is at, rather important. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of adhesive around that. And I'm gonna grab that. And the flat end gets attached onto the flat end of my tag like that. So we'll set this off. Well, it's stuck to my finger. <laughs> oh boy. We'll put that into place. I said, where was it? There we go. Okay, so we'll move this out of the way. We don't need that until the end. All right, let's go ahead and color in our cute little woodland creatures. So the bunny is going to be made with the light polished pink. I'm just gonna go ahead and color the bunny in. And the colors do lighten as they dry. So we're going to go ahead and color this in. There's the bunny. Our fox is going to get two colors, the light and the dark of this really pretty Calypso coral. So I'm going to color the main part of this little fox. In the light Calypso coral. You can see his little body. And then I'm going to do the inner ear in the light color and his face as well. In the light 
Calypso Coral. See how fast it is to color with these Stampin' Blends. Then I'm gonna do his outer ear in the darker color. I'm also gonna fill in this area here where the artist has kind of given him markings. I'm gonna color those over in the dark. And I'm also going to run a line of this dark along the bottom part of him. And I'm gonna blend that in with the light in a second. So I'll take my light and then I'm going to blend that in. Same with all the dark pieces. They will be blended in with the light. And there is my fox. Let's skip the tree for right now and we'll move on to the deer. We're going to use crumb cake. We're going to use the light and the dark. I'm going to start this time with the dark. I'm going to do all the highlighting first. All the parts of the deer that I want to be dark, I'm going to run the dark crumb cake over the top of them, like so. Now I'm going to come in with the light crumb cake, and I'm going to color in over the top even of that dark that I've laid down to help blend it into my cardstock. And then we'll finish coloring the deer here. Got the tail around the ears. Blend that part in the face. And then right here on the back of the deer, I am going to come back in with my dark. And again, where the artist has given us those little marks, we're going to go ahead and color with the darker to highlight the deer. So there's our deer. And then the other bunny scene here, we're going to pull this and we're going to make this bunny lavender. So I'm going to use the fresh freesia, except for the tail. Do the bunny's ears. Okay. And then I'm also going to do the mushroom and the flower in this fresh freesia here. Let's do this mushroom. And the dots on this mushroom, but the rest of them are going to be pink. So we'll do the pink. Color in that. And the dots, this mushroom will be pink. And the dots on this mushroom will be pink. I forgot to do the stem of this mushroom in the fresh freesia. And then, of course, we'll do Let's do the light soft suede here for the trunk. Like so. And let's use the light soft succulent for the grass and the leaves here and the of that flower to tie that in. And I'm also going to use um maybe a little bit of color that's already on my brush here, just to lighten this. I don't want to color my bunny, but I just want to lighten that area now so it's not quite so stark. Um, we're also going to come in with our tree and we're going to use the dark soft suede. And I'm going to bring in a scrap paper because I'm actually going to be coloring in the trunk in this color, but I will be using a blending brush to color in the leaves. And I'll show you. I'm going to come here with real careful and do the branches. They're rather thin, so I want to make sure to keep my marker strokes inside those lines. We have to take our time, don't we? Can't be in a hurry. All right, make sure I have all the spots of the trunk. I missed a tiny bit there. All right, so there's our tree trunk. And let me show you this really cool technique. So I'm gonna be using Granny Apple Green and one of the blending brushes here. I'm gonna pick up some color. 
and just deposit the darkest down there. And then I'm just gonna swirl over the top and color that tree. Isn't that so neat and very quick? So there is our tree. Let's start assembling our cards and we are almost finished. We'll start with this one since it's right here. I'm going to use the wet adhesive. It will be a lot faster and it'll also give me some wiggle room when I am attaching these guys down onto my piece. I'm going to center it there. So there's one. I should grab my silicone mat in case I slip out. Let me grab that. Put it in place. There's my fox. Here is my deer. If anyone is interested in doing these um, card in a box as a class, let me know in the comments below and we can make that happen. All right, we'll attach our bunny. And our other bunny, I'm kind of partial to the bunny because we have a bunny in our house. My daughter has a bunny. His name is Jasper. Sometimes he's in here when I am recording and you guys can hear him moving around, but um, he's not in here today. He's a free roam bunny, so he roams all over the place. All right, so there's our five cards. Now we have to attach our sentiments. So let me grab those. They've already been stamped right here. And we need to put some mini dimensionals on the back. So let me grab those. And we'll do three on each piece. I love the minis. They work perfectly for things like this that just have a small area. Almost done. Put those. There we go. All right, so let's get our dimensionals out of the way. And I like to use my take your pick tool when I pull the backs off. So I'm gonna do it on all of them. And then I'll just pick up the appropriate color tag because they match their counterparts. So let me pull them, all the backs off. I like to use the, the pointy end of my take your pick tool to pull these backs off. That way they end up on my take your pick tool and not on my floor. I can swoop them right into the trash can easily. So here's our bunny, grab our pink. This one says, I'm so proud of you. We'll put that across just like that. Here is our fresh freesia. And this one says celebrating you. So we'll put that one like that. Our deer is next, it says happy birthday. Let's do our fox, keep up the good work. These are great to put in a lunchbox, just for a coworker, just stick them on their desk and give them a little bit of encouragement. I love your kind heart. That one is so precious to me. All right, so there are our cards. Let's pair them with our envelopes. So the envelopes are also sold in my online store so that you can grab those there. I'm gonna toggle these kind of back and forth so that they will be less bulky in my box. So one upside down and one right side up. And we will put the purple bunny on the top. So there they go. We're going to turn these corners in. And this last one also gets tucked in. So there is our box. Let's grab our ribbon. So when we do a ribbon and we are um, wanting to wind it on four sides, I like to put it on the front and then I flip it over. 
and then I pull them so that they're even and then I cross them in an X. I go from one side to the other. Let me see if I can get it to lay flat. There we go. And then see how they're crossed? I bring them to the front. And then this is the time to move it to the part of the box that you want it on. So I'm going to put it in the center there. And I don't want to tie a knot because I want the recipient to be able to pull it out. So I'm just going to cross my pieces. And I'm going to hold on to it. I'm going to use my hole here. And I'm going to kind of squeeze that and put it through. Let's see if I can do it with one hand. Hey, not bad. <laughs> oh, I did it the wrong way. I need to go from the back to the front. Sorry, guys. Let's see if I can do it twice on one video with one hand. Oh, I almost had it. I'm going to hold on to it, put it down, and pull. There we go. So now that I have it in there, I'm going to push that down into place. That's going to help hold my piece. And since I don't want to knot it, I'm going to hold that there, make a bow, bring this one around. Come on. There we go. And I'm going to pull. And there we go. That's how I get my little box closed. Let's close the other one. So we will toggle these back and forth. I like the bunny on the outside because, like I said, I'm partial to bunnies. So we will go ahead and close this one. Okay, I'm going to leave that on there. Do the same thing. Bring it from the front to the back. Stand them up even. Cross them over. Hold on my piece. This time uh, it's already attached so I don't have to worry. I'm going to make my cross right there. Hold on to um, my little tag. Put it where I want it to be. Make my loop. Hold that. Make my other loop. Bring it through. Let's grab the ribbon. That's always the hardest part I think is grabbing it through that little loop that you make. Let's pull on it a little bit better, holding my center. There we go. And when I'm happy, I'm going to pull on those. They're a little long, so I will hold the knot and yank on them. And then tighten it one more time. And there are our two boxes. It says, my friend, great little gift to give somebody. I hope that you've enjoyed my video. I have certainly enjoyed bringing it to you. Um, coloring with you with those Stampin' Blends, blending with that on the, over that tree, and I hope that you've enjoyed it. Um, I thank you so much for watching. Um, if you don't mind giving me a thumbs up, I would greatly appreciate that. Comment below if you're interested in maybe taking this as a class, or if you just love this and you want to make your own. Um, share my video, I really appreciate that. You can share it to Facebook, you can share it to Pinterest. Um, ask your friends to subscribe and you subscribe as well. If you haven't yet, you will get lots of notifications of when I post new videos. I do post about five videos a week. Some weeks I get a little wild and do six. And sometimes I will do seven days. It just depends. Um, thank you very much. Check out my blog, inkyhandswarmhearts.com. It will be linked in the description below. And you can access measurements, PDFs, and lots of more fun projects. Um... Thank you again for watching. I am grateful for you on my channel. And if you have any questions, please drop them below. Thank you again. This is Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. Happy stamping.